Okay, let us work 4.30. You know, when I'm reading through these problems, the, the problems in your book for to pick the ones to, to work, in these videos, I always try to pick ones that I think are relevant or, you know, possible to see on homework or exams. This one caught my eye because, as it turns out, when you buy concentrated acids from a chemical supply house and they send it to you, they typically send you maybe a, a one liter or a four liter bottle of, you know, hydrochloric acid or sulfuric acid, in this case, nitric acid. And if you look on the bottle, they actually write, very often, a mass percent concentration, not a molarity. But when you use the acid in the lab, usually you dilute it for a procedure to a particular molarity, and you got to know what the molarity of the acid is, so you can use your dilution equation you know, to make the right concentration. So this calculation is kind of near and dear to my heart because it's something that you, know, you actually have to do um, when you're working in a lab. So let's, let's consider this more closely. The problem says that concentrated nitric acid that you might buy has a density of 1.41 grams per milliliter. That acid is also 70% by mass, so I put M slash M here, it just means by mass percent, nitric acid. Okay, so it's 70% by mass nitric acid. And it asks us then, what mass is present per liter of the nitric acid? So if I have one liter of this solution, what is the mass of the nitric acid that is present? Okay, now first off, Notice that again, going back to chemical names here, so we're going to practice this, this whole idea of going from a name to a formula. We need to write the name nitric acid, or write the formula for nitric acid, right? Now, unfortunately, I think the only way to do this probably is to memorize what the formula for nitric acid is. It's HNO3. Okay, it's on that list of strong laboratory acids. You need to memorize that list, memorize the names of those acids. Memorize the formulas of those acids. You'll see those all the time. And very frequently, it's very important to recognize those acids as strong laboratory acids. Because, for instance, you know, if you're asked, if you make a solution of this in water, is it a strong electrolyte? You need to know what's a strong acid that it dissociates completely because those are strong electrolytes. Okay, so there's some of this phenomenological stuff that you just kind of have to remember. Um, and to do that, you have to memorize. Um, lists such as the strong acids. Okay, so there's not really much way around that. But anyway, that's the formula. Now, how can we get up calculating what mass of HNO3 is present per liter of solution? How can we do that? Okay, well, let's just assume that we start with a liter. One liter of this concentrated acid. Okay, what would be the mass, the total mass? of that one liter. Well, I know a liter is equal to what? A thousand milliliters. So if I start with a thousand milliliters, I think I can use my density, 1.41 grams per every milliliter as a conversion factor to figure out how many grams this stuff weighs, basically. In this case, that concentrated acid solution would have a mass of 14 kin grams or 1,000 milliliter volume. Okay? Now, why did I do that? Well, I was told in the problem a mass percent. That tells me the mass fraction of HNO3 in the mixture, essentially. Okay, what percentage of the mass is HNO3? So, hopefully, that makes sense because. If the total solution mass is 14 10 grams, if I multiply that by a mass fraction, now here that's 0.7, which corresponds to the 70%. So 70 out of 100 is a percent, right? 0.7 out of 1 is a mass, mass fraction, right? But I'm just going to take that 0.7 and I'm going to multiply it by this 14 10. When I do that on my calculator, I get 987. And that number is significant because that 987 grams corresponds to the expected mass 
of HNO3 that's present in 1,410 grams of solution, which is equivalent to 1,000 milliliters. So in this solution, then, I expect 987 grams of HNO3. That's the mass that's expected, okay? Now, part B, what is the molarity of the acid that's present? Well, I'm still considering my one liter, and I remember that the molarity is moles per liter. I'm like, okay, well, how do I fill these numbers in? I started with one liter or a thousand milliliters, and in the previous step I found this is how many grams HNO3 must be present in that one liter. So right now, I know that I've assumed a liter or a thousand milliliters, right? So I'm kind of good with that. And, and this 987 grams has something to do with moles, but, but the units are a little bit off, right? If I could convert 987 grams to moles, I would be in business. Sure enough, I can do that. Because I know that one mole of the HMO3 has a specific mass associated with it. All I need to do is look up the molar mass for the nitric acid. It turns out that's a little over 63 grams per mole. 63.01 grams per mole. Okay? So I do the division and figure out how many moles must be present. It turns out that the answer is 15.66 moles. So I've got 15.66 moles and 987 grams. That 987 grams was contained within 1,000 milliliters or one liter. So I can simply write my 15.66 moles of HNO3 here in the numerator. And through this calculation, I have now determined that the molarity of my HNO3 concentrated stock solution is 15.66 moles per liter. So I might choose to kind of write that on the bottle so that um, you know, once I went through the calculation, when I come back and use that HNO3 again later, I can remember what its molarity was. So when I use it in the dilution equation, I can easily figure it out, okay? So this is an interesting problem. It goes between concentration units of measure, basically. Um, it's a very common thing. I've had to do this all the time in my professional experiments, as it turns out. Um, so I wanted to work it and show it to you, so you need to know how to do it too.